So, section 6-2. Again, we're talking about power series. This time we need to talk about something called ordinary points. So the first half of the section is kind of some theory about ordinary points and power series, and then we'll get into the solving. The solving, like I said, is pretty similar to the solving that you guys did on Friday. We're going to start. Consider a differential equation in standard form. A second order in standard form. So we have y double prime, add p of x times y prime, add q of x times y equals zero. This is going to help with our first definition. A point, x0, is said to be an ordinary point of the above differential equation. Both p of x and q of x are analytic at x naught. So do you remember how in the video I said you don't need this definition yet, but you're going to need it later? Now is the later part. OK, so I kind of figure we need to remind ourselves what analytic means. Okay, we say a function is analytic at, let's say, x0. In your notes before, I used a, but if we stay consistent with x0. If, do we know what that symbol means? If there exists, if there exists a power series, In x minus x naught, so like I said before, I wrote x minus a, but I want to stay consistent, with a positive radius of convergence. OK, if the point is not ordinary, it's called a singular point. Okay, so this is the first idea, is we need to look at some different equations and figure out which points are ordinary and which points are singular. First example we are going to look at is y double prime plus e to the x times y prime add sine of x multiplied by y is equal to zero. Okay, before we find any of the points, you have to make sure it's in standard form. So we're in standard form, we have a leading coefficient of one, we're set equal to zero, that's good. Okay, where does e to the x converge? everywhere. Yep. So e to the x converges for all x. Sine of x? Where does sine of x converge? Okay, so what this tells us then is every finite x is an ordinary point. And that's because e to the x and sine x converge for all values of x. Now, you guys could do a test of convergence here and find the radius of convergence like we did last week, right? Like we did on Thursday? We did the ratio test? Okay. 
we're not going to do that over and over again. If you don't know that sine of x converges for all x, you're going to have to do the ratio test. OK? Great. Let's see how we do on this next one. Next one is x, y, double prime. Add sine of x times y is equal to 0. Same idea as before. I want to find all the ordinary and singular points. What is the difference between this example and example one? It's not in standard form. Yeah, not in standard form. So you want to start by dividing by x to put this in standard form. This one, I'm not expecting you to know off the top of your head where it converges. Can anybody give me a reminder of the power series for sine of x? OK, so if we start with that idea, if you want sine of x divided by x then, you're just taking all the terms and dividing by x. So we get 1 subtract x squared over, sorry, 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 5 factorial, etc. Okay, to know where this converges, it's helpful if we can write it in summation notation. So this is a sum from k equals 0 to infinity. If you remember the power series for sine of x, the uh, signs don't change, and neither do the denominator, denominators. So that is negative 1 to the k over 2k plus 1 factorial. So that's the stuff that doesn't change. The x to the power does, though. So that'll be x to the 2k. Okay, if I wanted us to, could we find the radius of convergence for this? What would be our guess? Where do you think this converges? Knowing where sine of x converges. <coughs> everywhere. Yeah. So this will converge everywhere. So all finite x values are ordinary points again. I promise it does get more interesting. Not every power series converges everywhere. Okay. Now, we are not interested in all values of x. What we're going to be doing in this section, we are mostly going to be interested in x equals 0. So most of the time, we're going to have find a power series about x equals 0. So we have one more example I want to discuss, and then we're going to go on and talk about the next idea. If we look at the equation y double prime, add natural log of x times y is equal to 0. I'm going to be really impressed if you guys know where natural log converges. You could find the radius, right, if I wanted you to? You couldn't find the radius of convergence based on what we did last week? Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to ignore what you just told me and assume that, yes, you can find it. Natural log of s, x converges when x is between 0, not included, and 2, inclusive. Okay, like I said, though, we're interested in x equals 0. What do we know, then, about x equals 0? It's a singular point.
Okay, questions on ordinary and singular points before we go on. Yes? When would something not have a positive radius of convergence? Like, what's a negative? It's not going to have a negative. It could have a radius of convergence of zero. Okay. So the next logical question is, what happens if you are not in standard form? We could put everything in standard form, but it's helpful if we have kind of a general rule of thumb when we're not in standard form. So that's what we're going to go to next, is looking at when we have polynomial coefficients. So let's consider the following differential equation a2 of x times y double prime, add a1 of x times y prime, add a0 of x times y is equal to 0. So second order uh, homogeneous differential equation, where, this is important, a2 of x, a1 of x, and a0 of x have no common factors. Then consider some point, x equals x naught. There are two cases. That point could be ordinary. It could be singular. The point will be ordinary if, when you plug it in to A2, you do not get 0. If you plug it into A2 and you do get 0, then it's going to be singular. So this is a whole lot easier because we don't need to actually know where everything converges. So let's see what this looks like in an example. Our equation is x squared minus 1, y double prime, at 2x, y prime, plus 6y is equal to 0. Using the idea above, first thing I want to make sure is that we have no common factors. So we're looking at that coefficient, that coefficient, and that coefficient. So x squared minus 1, 2x, and 6. We have no common factors besides 1, but we don't care about 1. You're looking for common factors amongst all three. So here we have a factor of 2, but we're looking amongst all three. Okay, so then you care most about this first term, or the first coefficient. If we set that equal to 0, that's equal to 0 when x is plus or minus 1. Equal to 0 gives us singular points. So x equals plus or minus 1 is your only singular points x is not equal to plus or minus 1 gives you the ordinary points. Okay, same idea applies if we were to do x squared plus 1, y double prime plus 2x, y prime plus 6y equals 0. So if I change that x squared minus 1 to an x squared plus 1, we can do this same process that we did above. There's still no common factors amongst all three coefficients. This time, though, if you set that first term equal to 0 to find your singular points, you're going to get two imaginary singular points. That is possible. So we still say this differential equation has two singular points. They just happen to be imaginary. Questions on power series, not power series, on singular points or ordinary points before we see where this is going. Okay, this is the first part of your homework, being able to find the ordinary and singular points. Now, this does lead us to solving the differential equations using power series. 
Um, so that's last thing that we need to talk about, which leads us to this theorem. The theorem is about the existence of power series solutions. So obviously we want to know if a solution exists before we try to find it. Okay. If we have some x equals x naught, and that is an ordinary point of the differential equation we wrote before, the one that's not in standard form, a2 of x y double prime at a1 of x times y prime at, ooh, I ran out of room. Sorry, you get the point. Okay, if that is true, we can always find two linearly independent solutions of the following form y is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c of n, x minus x naught to the n. Okay, the logical question when you find a power series solution is where does it converge? So the solution converges. for at least the absolute value of x minus x naught is less than r, where r is the distance from x naught to the closest singular point. And that singular point could be real or it could be complex. So a few things are important here. It's going to be a homogeneous equation. I'm not going to give you anything that's not homogeneous. You have to have an ordinary point. And I told you we're interested in x equals 0. So pretty much every problem, you're going to be finding the power series solution about x equals 0. Make sure that it's ordinary. You should then find two linearly independent solutions, and you should know where it converges. This is pretty restrictive, though. That's just where at least where it converges. Oh, it could be larger than that. OK, so let's look at what this is going to look like. y double prime minus 2xy is equal to 0. We are going to find a power series solution about x equals 0. How do you know that x equals 0 is ordinary? Because up here we said it has to be ordinary. Maybe look down at your notes since that's what we've been talking about. Okay, there's no common factors between 1 and negative 2x, and this first term is never going to equal 0, the coefficient. Okay, so x equals 0 is an ordinary point. Um, really, everything is an ordinary point, all finite x. What that tells us is we're going to have two solutions of the following form, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c of n. This will be x minus 0, so that'll just be x to the n. And that converges for at least the absolute value of x minus 0 is less than Okay, r is the distance from x naught to the closest singular point. Do we have any singular points? No. So that r then is infinity. So it's going to converge everywhere. That will not always be the case. Oftentimes you will have a singular point. Okay, this is the new theory. So do we have questions about this theory before we start solving? 
Okay, solving exactly the same as what you did on Friday. So we're going to have to find the second derivative, plug in, and keep going. Okay, so first derivative will go from n equals 0 to infinity, bring down the n. We then have c of n, x to the n minus 1. Now, do you guys remember me saying if you plug in n equals 0, you get 0 for the whole term? So generally, we start then at n equals 1. Okay, maybe not. Hopefully now you do. Okay, good. Thank you. Second derivative. We have n. We're going to bring down n minus 1. C of n, x to the n minus 2. Is that your normal tone or just for your dad? That's just for my dad. That's all I know. Okay. Does your mom have a special tone too? Yes. What's hers? It's very loud and it's like an alarm. It's I'm not judging you at all. Okay, if we plug in one, we're going to get zero again. Okay, so that's always going to be the case. First derivative, we're going to start at 1. Second derivative, we're going to start at 2 because we don't care about the terms that are 0. Okay, so then we go back to the differential equation. And we're going to plug in everything. So we have the second derivative. So this is y double prime minus 2x times y. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that x inside. So this first summation stays the same. You can put the 2 inside if you want. I'm not going to, but you definitely can. OK, so the ultimate goal is we need to get these two summations together. What are their two requirements before we can put them together? Okay, indices are the same and the exponents are the same. What is our first step? What do we need to look at? Okay, what about the exponents? Where they start. Okay, if we plug in 2, this will start with x to the 0. If we plug in 0, this will start with x to the 1st. Which summation do I need to manipulate them, the first one or the second one? First one. So I'm going to take out that x to the 0 so that they both start with x to the first. If we plug in 2, we get 2 times 1, c2, x to the 0. OK, so now this summation will start with n equals 3. Okay, so that was the first thing we needed to do. Now they both start with x to the first. Then what? <laughs> do the k thing, yes. We both need these to be x to some power. First summation, what is k going to be equal to? n minus 2. Second one, k will be equal to n plus 1. So we'll end up with x to the k in both summations. So here we get 2c2. If we plug in n equals 3, we're going to start from k equals 1 to infinity. n then is k plus 2. So we get k plus 2, k plus 1, c, k plus 2, x to the k, minus we plug in n equals 0, we start from k equals 1 to infinity. I'm going to bring the 2 in. c of the k minus 1, 
x to the k. So this should be very similar to what you guys did on Friday. Now I can bring these two together. It's going to be the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k plus 2, k plus 1, c of the k plus 2, minus 2, c of the k minus 1, x to the k equals 0. If this is equal to 0, tells us two things. We know that 2c2 is equal to 0. And then here, for this to be equal to 0, there's two possibilities. x could be 0, which we don't care about. Or this all could be 0, so all the constants are 0. We get k plus 2 times k plus 1, c of the k plus 2 minus 2c two of k minus 1 is equal to 0. And that gives us our recurrence relation. OK, which one am I going to solve for? Do I want c of k plus 2 alone or c of k minus 1? k plus 2. You always want to relate your term to something previous, not something in the future. So we get 2c of k minus 1 all over k plus 2, k plus 1. And it's important to know where this starts. Based on our summation, we're starting at k equals 1. OK. Like Friday, there's no efficient way to go about this. You're going to have to plug in values for k. I'm going to start with k equals 1. We get c3 is equal to 2c0 over 3 times 2. My suggestion to you would be to leave it like this, because you're trying to look for a pattern of some type. You might end up with a factorial or something. So I wouldn't multiply those out if I were you. If we plug in k equals 2, we get c4 is equal to 2c1 over 4 times 3. Plug in 3, we get c5 equals 2c0 over 5 times 4. Oh, sorry, this is a 2, not a 0. But we know that c2 is 0, so that term is really 0. Keep going, we get c6 equals 2c3 over 6 times 5. c3, though, we have up here, so we're going to use that. So we really get 2 squared over 6 times 5 times 3 times 2 times c0. I'm going to do a few more and then show you where this is going to take us. If we plug in k equals 5. We get c7 is equal to 2, c4 over 7 times 6. c4 we have here. So we get 2 squared times 7 times 6 times 4 times 3, c1. Okay, I said this on Friday or in the video you guys watched, but be careful. If you mess up the first one, it's going to mess up everything after that. Find the next two.
Those are what I got. You guys agree? Okay. We're almost done. We got like mm, a few more steps left. Okay, so our Y then. This is going to be C0 plus C1X plus C2X squared, or C2 though is 0, so plus 0X squared plus C3 X to the third plus C4 X to the fourth, etc. Now, initially we talked about you're going to have two solutions, two linearly independent solutions. Here's where those two solutions come from. Everything that has a C0 is one solution. Everything that has a C1 is the other solution. So our first solution, take out the C0. We get 1 plus 2 over 3 times 2x cubed. I didn't write them all out, but your next one is going to be here with x to the sixth. So we get 2 squared over 6 times 5 times 3 times 2 x to the sixth. We have our x to the ninth also, so we get 2 cubed. 9 times 8 times 6 times 5 times 3 times 2 x to the ninth. And then that'll keep going. Then everything that has a C1, so we get x plus 2C1, 4 times 3, x to the fourth. So that was our x to the fourth. We also get our x to the seventh. And then that's going to keep going. OK, so you have two options. You can leave these as your two solutions. Generally, it's nicer if you can write it in terms of a summation. So our first one, so that's this one. We're going to write that as a summation. 1 plus the summation from k equals 1 to infinity two to the first two to the second two to the third so that's two to the k okay here we have three six nine that's 3k factorial but you should notice that we're missing some of the terms. So like here we're missing a 4, here we're missing the 4 and the 7. So on top, you have 1 times 4 times 7, all the way up to 3k minus 2. That takes out all the missing terms. And then we have x to the 3k. So this is just that condensed. The second summation, we get x plus, or the second solution, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity. We still have 2 to the k. Denominator is 3k plus 1 factorial. So here we're missing a 2, here we're missing a 2 and a 5. So we get 2 times 5 times 8, all the way up to 3k minus 1, x to the 3k plus 1. And we say both of these converge where the absolute value of x is less than infinity. Okay, 
web assign. I'm not sure if it's going to have you condense or not. I can't remember. Um, on your test, I would not expect you to come up with this. So if you left your solution like that, that's fine. If it's something that is simpler to condense, I'm going to ask you to. But if it's something complicated, I'm fine if you just leave the first few terms. Okay. How do we feel about this? Awesome. Okay. We have one more example. So I will give you guys the option. Do you want to do this example today or do you want to do it tomorrow? And by you, I mean you are going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Today? Okay. I don't know if you're going to finish, but we're going to start at least. Okay, your equation is x squared plus 1, y double prime, plus x, y prime, minus y is equal to 0. You are finding a power series solution about x equals 0. I want you to start by explaining how you know there's going to be two power series solutions. And I want you to tell me where they're going to converge. And then I want you to actually find them. Um, I definitely want you to do this with the person next to you in case you make a mistake somewhere that you find it earlier. So, like, make a friend with someone next to you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so <laughs> the, these three things are factors, so that means you boy. Yeah, so basically they're not factors, but how do you know? Um, <laughs> no common factors. Oh, wait, no, my B. No, so then we do x squared plus 1 equals 0. x is equal to plus or minus i. So that is our ordinary point. Singular points. Try to jump in and start solving if you haven't started What's that already.
Same thing, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. I see what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have to fix this though, because it starts with x to the 2, and now we've got x to the 0, and x to the 0. So let's just make k. Let's just well, we can't do that yet. We have to fix that. What do you mean we can't do that yet? 